Hi everyone, uh, this video is about REST Assured and API testing and detailed really explanation of API. It's a detailed application of API because most of the people doesn't know how API works and all. So this is for them and I think you can also see a lot of interview questions uh, regarding REST API. So yes, and before we start, I request you guys kindly subscribe to my channel and click on the notification bell icon because there are a lot of uh, videos are coming up now so you'll get notified early at the earliest. So uh, before starting, I just wanted to uh, say what API is. So API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, which is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. So like two applications talks each uh, to each other in the form of API with the help of API, right? So API is an intermediate between two applications. I'm just gonna move to next slide, like introduction to API as well. So when uh, you know, I'll just give you a brief about it, and then we wanna move it. So when you use an application on your mobile phone, right? Application connects to the internet and sends a data to the server, and the server that retrieves that data interprets it and perform the necessary actions and send it back to your phone. So that's how how your phone communicates with the, with the help of internet. So uh, how this is happening, right? You click on some button in the Facebook or you click on some button in the Instagram. Uh, let's say you click on your profile page. So how the profile page is updated and displaying it to you. Even the home page, even if you go to some, someone's profile, you'll see the latest data. So how are you going to navigate it through? And if you're not connecting with internet, you won't be able to see the fresh updates. So all this happens, happens because of that. API. So if you connect those all things in your real life, you'll be able to understand more in the API. So API is an application program interface. It's a way of communication between two applications. But applications may differ in the platform or in terms of technology also, right? The platforms are different. Like even if you can, uh, even we do have the applications, right, in our organization. So uh, the platforms and the technologies, maybe they use Java, they use Python, but the communication, the way of communication, uh, you know, where the application will be different, the, the way of communication between two applications is the, you know, two APIs only. So, there's a way, right? This is the way of communicating. Maybe, maybe your application is different. Maybe you have a mobile application. Maybe you have a Windows-based application. So, the communication happens over, like, if you have the, you need the latest updates, you need a internet, wherein you do have the HTTP protocol and all. Uh, with that, it will traverse and give you the, uh, you know, communicate between two applications, right? If you need some application from the server itself. So, you need to send the data to the server and the, uh, in response, the server will give you the, uh, you know, the latest information wherein you need it. So, okay. So, so the application then interprets, like what happens is when you, um, you know, uh, server sends some data to an application, it interprets that data and present with you information you wanted to, uh, you know, you want in a readable way. So this is this is what API is. All this happens by API. Okay? So I think if you can see this, Allah, now we'll be having a you know uh, diagram typically representing and understanding what API exactly is. So you know you have front end of the application, middle layer is the API, and the back end of the application. Okay. So, wherein you, you, you do have these three things like the, you know, the middle layer API. This is the responsibility of the API layer to fetch the data from the back and display it on the front end. Back end, maybe your server, right? And then, uh, like, what happens is sometimes we do have the database. We need the database things and, uh, to become like, it, it comes like, uh, like the API is connected and updating the uh, data into the, uh, this thing, uh, database. And then, then there's another API to read the data from the database also. When two applications in, a, in our organization was interacting, right? So when uh, when I was working in a um, in a telecom domain, when uh, we worked in a sales domain and we need account information. So account information, there are different people who work in even the e-commerce application. There are different sections, right? So each of them are communicating through the APIs, right? So in the in the account section, if I go to some other page, like if I wanted to see the order details of the person, right? So these are things like when I write the order ID. I can get, when, with the order ID, I can search it. So how are we going to search the order when you put the order ID? So there's a communication happens with this order ID. What is the order is there? So the other team, other team who has the order along, like who, who will do the sales thing, who, who belongs, who belongs to the sales team, uh, they might have, um, they might have the details of the what I have purchased. So they will, you know, send in response the details of my purchases. So that's what happens, okay? Um, 
ओके okay, सो so, So it is very obvious. More than the API is a secure, more it is able to fetch the data from the back end and show it into the front end. If you can see this one, if this is the one you can say that this is also the responsibility of the API to take the data from the front end and insert it in the back end. So this is like back end for communication. So I'll just take a pause here. You can see here if you wanted to take a screenshot of it, you can take it. So I'll just explain you some more thing. It means if the API has been tested correctly, it will shows the correct data on the front end. And ensures the data insertion will also be working fine. Okay, if you see for an example, let's say for a flight, you know, okay, when you, uh, you know, I'll just give you an example for a flight, for if you can understand it here, listening it to me, guys. You are asking for this slide, but I think uh, I don't have the slides because my laptop got crashed. This is the very much disclaimer who is watching it, what you know, this thing, and I I lost all the data where I have it, and it's very difficult for me because I'm planning to have a grid, but it's not just happening. So the second day, you you guys have to listen to me because I'm sharing a lot of information, putting a lot of efforts instead of say, sharing this slide. Why I'm explaining it to you guys? So this explanation is really helpful. So yeah. Uh, so uh, like for example, for example, if we take a make a we are booking flights, okay? So make my trip dot com is consuming APIs exposed by various airlines. So this is how you have to explain to the interviewer as well. When we search for some flight type, it fetch the information from those export APIs of various airlines. For example, I wanted to uh, book a flight from India to Canada. I'll put the date like uh, January 1, 2023. I have to book. Okay. And then, uh, you know, it will show you the like makemytrip.com okay, from India to this one. So what happens is, through APIs, it, it goes these all details. Okay, this first uh, we want uh, in uh, from India to Canada. I want for this day how many. So you can send the details to all the APIs, and in response, API will give you the uh, the airlines. It can uh, you know this APIs will traverse. Okay, will uh, you know go goes with this information. Uh, India to Canada, January first to all the airlines. Communicate with all the airlines and give the data. So whatever airlines had the flight on that particular day from. In here to Canada, it will uh, come in the response and show us what we want. Like we wanted to see the flights, right? So those all flights are displayed to us. So it, will, it happens like when you click on okay, search. So it will search the flights, give you all the details and the API is the communicating medium from the back end. So API will bring you the data what you wanted to, what you wanted to see it in the screen. So based on your filter criteria. Okay, so this is how it is. So the request message will go and the APIs and the response messages you will have it. So the requests will be goes in the form of HTTP request and this is that HTTP response also will say. Like you will get the response code. Like when you're testing it, right? When you're testing it, you will be seeing the response code as well in the API. It will be, if you see, uh, like if you right click in you know, any of the applications and the uh, Okay, I'll, I'll show it maybe in the next thing. Maybe I'll remember where and all. I have to show you where and all. You can see the response code of everything. So, let's see quickly if I can. Let me hear what all is. So, if I'll be um, opening a Chrome. Okay. Just I'll show it to you how does it happens. Okay. If I open a new window and then I am gonna have I just got to have google.com okay so um, let's say I'll be searching the uh, uh, what um, uh, flights okay Uh, from Nagpur. Okay, I'll put the band. Okay, then I'll put, um, maybe I want it on October. One other day. And I'll put on search flights, okay? Then you're gonna have inspect. You wanna click on inspect, and you're gonna connect for that. Not coming by this one. You will be seeing that a response code here. Uh, 
There's no request as coming from me. I'm not sending any request as of now here. Okay, pick a date. Okay, more option I have. Is it economy? Okay, you see a lot of responses are coming, right? When you put all those details, also that API that wrap. So these are like, you see the state, right? You see the state. State is 200, 200. So, so. You will be seeing the this thing, right? So it is you will see all this status code, right? So you'll be seeing people you know for every time. Okay. So let's say if I'll put one thing. So then I'll put a D thing. Okay, so request itself is not okay. So this is all time keeping me and uh, so if you click on particular API, okay. So if you can see, see this is in the form of JSON, right? And if you wanted to see, okay, so this is the request and this is one hour one. Okay, so this is the request URL you'll be sending it out. Your request method is get and the status code is 300. So this is how it will be. And you see the response header. So it will be true. There are a lot of things. Okay. So this is how, like when you're not accepting here, you will be seeing some error. Okay. If you, you wanted to see some error, you can see it. Okay. So this is how it will be. Now let's go back to our slide. So using the slide show. Okay. So this is how it happens. And I, I just show you a brief of it. And I think that does work. Okay, then move on to the next slide. So, what do you mean by features and the resources in context of API testing? So, if someone sends you features or if someone sends you the source, so features that I'm using in testing to set some functionality or and similarly resources is referring in terms of API automation testing, referring to some functionality. When you're referring to some functionality, so in API testing, it is called as resource. So, type of APIs, okay, this is very important. Types of API, what we have it is like uh, we have um, uh, SOAP and we have REST store. So, uh, the full form of REST store is a representational state master. So, both, both are web services, okay. So, what is the difference between API and the web services? So, there are two types of API SOAP and REST store. Web, web services are uh, web services are service used by application communicating over the same network, generally internet. API does not allow or always require any such internet connection as said earlier. It is communication layer between the applications which may vary. May not be like if you have the Windows application or still you like you have a uh, applications which you need data, right? So it, it does that is also requires an API wherein you are communicating it through the database also. So there's some way like the backend application is there to get the data from. Okay. All APIs are not web services. So this is very important too. So I'll just take a pause because I'll speed in I'll speak in fast. So you can just uh, take a speed to snap of it. Okay. okay. So, uh, API versus web services, if I wanted to communicate, okay. So, I'll just tell you some more thing and where I'll be summarizing. So, web services practice facilitates communication between two, par two web parties in compliance with communication standards and protocols like XML, extendable markup language, and simple object apps, like the SOAP, right? SOAP. Web services, uh, description language, and the universal description. There's a lot in uh, that, right? An API is a method by which the third party vendors can write programs that that interface easily with other programs. Okay. And a web service is designed to have an interface that is depicted in a machine executable format, usually specified in web service description. Okay. And our WSDL uh, generally is an API, right? Typically, HTTP is the most commonly used protocol. Which protocol has been used is an HTTP. 
may use any means of communication to initiate interaction between the application. For example, the system calls are involved using Okay, that is, that, is, that is not required. So I just write down what I have to say. Okay, summarizing, I'll be summarizing. So all APIs, all web services are APIs, but all APIs are not web services. Okay, you got it. So web services might not perform all the operation that an API would perform. A web, there's a difference, right? This is, this is what people will ask you. This is an interview question. A web services uses only three styles of use, so press, XML, RPC for communication whereas api may use any style for communications a web service always needs a network for its operation when an api doesn't need it i told you right for its operation an api facilitates interfacing directly with an application whereas web services interacts with two machines over and over and okay so what is difference between soap and rest assure okay in case of SOAP services, developer provide a single WSDL, like Web Services Description Language File, which all operations like features, functionality, resources are defined. And develop, uh, like in the next show, developer provides URI component, right? URI, I'm going to explain to you maybe in the next time. URI is a uniform resource indicator for testing each functionality resource or a WADL file may be provided. It only supports XML format for communication. Extend, 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 extendable, extendable markup language. Okay, this is the one. Extendable, uh, E X L D. Okay, supports XML, JSON, plain text. Okay. It is a heavier version as compared to REST in context that it contains all the operations in a single. Okay, in the rest are short. As every resource has its own URI, therefore it is less complex and could be set lighter version because you do have it. Like if you want it to navigate it to like from the Google, you wanted to see the graph. So it will be like Google and Oblique. You have the base and, okay, I'll just explain maybe. You just write that down and you need to explain that. It's a protocol, therefore support cannot, uh, SOAP cannot use REST services. Okay, REST is an architectural strength and can be, can use SOAP or web services as it is concept and can use protocol like HTTP. SOAP uses service interfaces to expose business logic. And define a strict XML standard. The rest uses URI to expose business logic and does not define too much standard. So if you see, there are a lot of standards in the SOAP services, so it is very secure. So if you see, in the security wise, SOAP is more secure. Okay? So this, is, this is an interview question. So now, what we are, uh, what I'm explaining to you, like base and endpoints, you have it like, okay, in the URI, you so uniform resource will indicate as a link at which one has to perform. Okay? So API testing, it is provided by the developer. It consists of two points, uh, two parts, the base and the endpoint. For example, if you wanted to go local host and then you wanted to see friends, so it's oblique friends. So endpoint is a friend. So like if you wanted to go to Google and then endpoint is a graph. So this is how it is. The location where API is deployed is generally resource functionality you want to see. HTTP and HTTP request. So HTTP is you know, hypertext transfer protocol. And WWW is World Wide Web is all about communication between web clients and the servers. Communication between client computers and web servers is done by sending HTTP requests and receiving HTTP response. The data travel between the request and response in for other formats like JSON. JSON is the in other formats also like JSON. This is one of the format like Java, JavaScript object notation. This is the full form which you really need to know. Is one of the most commonly used and accepted format for the data transmission. JSON in the, is in the form of key and value. Code. Now, what is actually what all HTTP requests are there and descriptions? I've just showed you get. So, get is no data is required for this request, it's used to fetch data from the given resource. You wanted to get the data right to get post. Data is required for this kind of request, it is used to insert the data at the given source resource relational post. It's like you wanted to create something. And insert something we will be using for post. Put is required for this request or request and whole of the data is passed that is to be updated and the one that is not updated requires at an ID value to, to update the particular like for update we use put and for creation we use post. So put is also used for creation as well. But see for the standards purpose, like put and post are both uh, you know are the same people will say why you are using um, you know if I were using put and post, it's so that uh, you know um, I can use put, but for uh, you know for the readability, it's like 
to follow the standards for the really building really like example i have not inserted i have updated it so i have put in code code, code right so that other developer will know knows that that i have updated it not to create it and if i wanted to create it i can use post whereas we can use both for creation and updating but uh, it's to, uh, follow the standard so we follow the standards and we put the post and put to and to to make for sure other developers are also understanding what i'm doing what i have done it to the api patch data is required for this http request also only the data is asked which is required to be updated Requires an ID value too to update. That is the particular request. Delete no data is required in this case. Delete the required data from the given resource location. Requires an ID or value to update that particular request. I think this is all about it. And thank you guys. And I hope you like this. And if you really want me to cover more of API, I have a lot of APIs to tell you like how we can create an API and everything. Like how we do the API automation. If you wanted to make a second part of it. You need to put a comment section in the comment section below that you really required me to. If I have some five six comments, definitely I'm gonna work on APIs because, yeah, I really wanted to more make video on this API. And this is very important topic, guys. If you really have APIs, and I think most of the organization work on APIs, so this is this is the market, guys. You really have to concentrate. So don't forget to subscribe my channel, like and share my videos. That's all I need. Thank you. All the best. Thanks.